All right, in this last uh, scenario, what we're really going to be focusing on is some of the comments that Sandy was making about the importance of having a very clear enforcement process and understanding what kind of documentation is required in order to prove an ethical violation. The act itself may be evidence of misconduct, but in order for there to be an ethical violation, you have to prove that it was willful, that it was intentional, and that it was against the specific orders or specific contractual agreements that were in place. And so in this particular situation of Oak Ridge, um, here's the facts. The manager withdrew $50,000 from the association's reserve account, put it in their operating account, but did, made that action without, being, um, without it being authorized directly by the board. Um, there was a $155,000 repair special assessment, um, and um, the allegation was that they failed to collect it in a timely manner. Uh, they collected a 10% oversight fee for overseeing this special repair pro and special assessment project. They did not file um, the necessary tax documents, and so therefore there was a forfeiture of the tax status. And, um, and then the last one was that the board approved um, a, contract to, a contractor to perform work, and at the last minute, the uh, manager actually replaced that contractor with his own company. All right, so those are the facts. So on, on, on the face value of, of hearing that, it looks like there's some things that are going on that are inappropriate. But here was the documentation that was provided with this case. There was a board resolution authorizing the board to file a complaint against this PCAM. Um, there was a bank statement that showed the transfer of the money from the reserves into the operating account. There was the management agreement. There was the special assessment documents um, and the amount of the special assessments to be collected per unit. And then there was the letter from the tax authority saying that the status had been um, suspended. So those were the documents provided. So the question then is, was that enough documentation in order to prove an ethical violation? And after uh, going through the, uh, the typical review process, the Designation Ethics Committee, this was an actual complaint several years ago, um, found that there was not um, unethical behavior in this case. There really was primarily misunderstandings and the board not clearly understanding what they had authorized the manager to do and the language that was specifically in the contract. There was um, a warning issued on the tax status because there was a feeling that um, the manager did have an obligation to assure that the taxes had been filed, um, or at least recommend that the taxes had been filed. So there was a warning issue on that one particular thing. But this is just an example, and although this is a designation ethics case um, at the CAI level, you still want to make sure that you have uh, proper enforcement procedures in place so that real documentation needs to be provided uh, on the intent of the individual um, as you move through the process because there's a lot of gray area involved here and so trying to be as exact as possible is very important. <clears throat>